Zag, Walu, it's Milo Boggs. I need to talk to you. Go away! I thought these growers were your friends. I never said that. But they need alchemical waste to feed some of the crops. And I have uses for some of the toadstools, so we trade. Did you cheat them or something? No. Then what's the problem? My guess is that they don't like the idea of anyone being down here. It's likely that they don't pay the knotted cord either. Well, I nearly fell to my death climbing down that hole. I'm not climbing up again without talking to somebody. Agreed. Eilish nodded. (sighs) I promise nothing's wrong. But I and the people with me truly do need to talk to you. So we're coming in. This time, the mushroom growers didn't answer, and after waiting several moments, the alchemist led his companions down the tunnel. The passage appeared to have been cut by water, likely done as the area's underground rivers periodically sought to alter course over generations, honeycombing the ground under Corvus. The glow of the lantern slipped over brown, dripping earth and smooth, eroded stone. Then, shining from where the cave widened out, more light appeared up ahead. Zag and Walu had their own lamps burning. Beyond the natural doorway, mushrooms grew in beds of black muck. Some looked ordinary enough, but others had caps as large as Gardek's shield or were studded with warty, tumor-like growths. Empty hands raised to shoulder level, Milo passed through the gap first. Gardek followed, sidling to negotiate the narrow space. Once inside, he peered around the chamber. The growers had set up housekeeping in an alcove equipped with a nest of filthy blankets, a camp stove, and battered tin cookware. Several bushel baskets and rope likely employed to move things in and out of the sinkhole, an oboe, and a tambour. There was no sign of the farmers themselves. Don't move! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Gardek turned and looked up. Milo did the same. Zag and Walu were perched on a ledge above the opening the bounty hunter and alchemist had just come through. Both gobbers wore gas masks and were gaunt, ragged, and dirty. Zag, the male, had lost the tip of one long green ear to some mishap and held a bushel basket, tilted, poised to empty its contents on the intruders below. Walu, the female, whose skin was a green so dark it looked nearly black in the wan lamplight, held a rusty-headed spear readied for thrusting. What's in the basket? Spores, maybe. Don't move. I coped with your fear gas. My fear gas isn't meant to kill. The alchemist turned his attention back to the gobbers. See? It's me, Milo. Just like I said. It's not. It's you and strangers. Harmless strangers? Colby was still on the other side of the gap with Eilish. We just want to talk to you. If only you'll be reasonable. If not, well, my companion out here is an arcanist. He can cast bolts of flame into your home. Even if they don't set you on fire, they'll burn your crops. And then he and Colby there will flee back down the tunnel and up the hole to tell the watch and the knotted cord about this place. But there's no need for any of that. Zag and Walu exchanged uncertain glances, but he didn't set down the basket, and she didn't stop pointing the spear at the top of Gardek's head. Gardek considered possibilities. Could he snatch hold of the spear before the gobber could thrust, then leap backward and pull her off the ledge? He suspected he could, but would his jump carry him far enough to avoid the cloud when the spores poured down? And what about the others? Would Milo be able to scramble to safety or yank on his gas mask in time? Would the dust waft through the gap to Colby and Eilish? Milo kept smiling up at the gobbers. What Colby said is true. Besides, I brought you something. Moving slowly, he unbuckled one of the pouches in his vest and brought out a vial full of red liquid. Is that the teacher? The tincture you like to put in your special tea. Yes. Milo pulled out the cork. Twould be a shame to kill me and make me spill it. Walu peered back at him, then tossed the spear away. <laughs> Nobody wants to kill you, Bugs. You have to learn to take a joke. 
She discarded her gas mask and scrambled down from the ledge. Zag, likewise unmasked, set down the basket and made his own descent. Meanwhile, Gardek and Milo moved back from the doorway, making room for Colby and Eilish. The arcanist peered out curiously. Walu thrust out her hand for the vial. Not yet. Bog said it was ours! Technically, it's a fee, but a fee for very light work. As my friends and I have been saying, we only want you to answer some questions. You mean to snitch? Not the kind of snitching that will come back on you. Surely every sane resident of the Undercity wants the rash of tunnel murders stopped, and that's the matter we're investigating. One of the murders happened right at the top of the sinkhole. If you saw or heard anything, we need to know about it. The gobbers looked at each other. I saw the killer. Did you now? Please, tell us all about it. I wasn't down here. I'd gone to sell some of the blue caps, and I was coming back through the tunnel that snakes around and comes up in the armorer's burg. Go on. Well, I had my lantern so I could see there was a human walking along ahead of me, and then I heard and smelled something coming up fast behind me. What kind of odor was it? (laughs) I don't know. Something nasty enough to make me think right away of the stories I'd heard about the killer. Anyway, I looked around, and there he was, muffled up in a hooded cloak and rushing out of the dark. I spun around to run and noticed a kind of crack in the tunnel wall. I dropped the lantern, dashed to that crack, and jammed myself inside. Did you really expect to hide successfully? At the very least, the killer had already seen the light of your lantern moving along. (laughs) It worked. The killer charged right on by me. He attacked the human instead. I hope you saw him up close as he passed. Hmm. Yes and no. I was peeking out of the crack, so he was only in sight for an instant. The cloak and hood covered everything, and I didn't have my light anymore. It was back lying on the ground. Think. You must have noticed something. I think he had something metal in his hand. I'm pretty sure I saw it gleam. Anything else? Just that he was big. But you already know that, right? (sighs) Yeah. Zag eyed Gardek speculatively. You understand, I don't mean just big like a human. I mean big like you. No, that we did not know. No one has reported it clearly and unequivocally until now. Are you sure? Yes. Good. Milo, please give our friends here their payment. They just earned it. 